<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all how you can update your PlayStation Vita manually to a specific firmware version if you desire. Now, I'm doing this just in case if you are on, let's say, a firmware lower than firmware 3.60 and you're looking to modify your Vita, you can follow this tutorial using firmware 3.60 to get to that firmware. Or if you are on a firmware which is higher than 3.60, a bit lower than, let's say, 3.73, you can use this to update as well, too. This isn't specific to any firmware version. This is just showing you how you can manually do it. Now, if anybody might be wondering why they might want to do this and why don't you just go into your system settings and go over to system update right here, well, it's pretty simple. If you're looking to modify your Vita or get to a specific firmware version, sometimes the highest firmware might not be usable for a modification at the current moment in time while you're watching this. Or again, if you're just on a really low firmware and you need to get to a specific firmware for whatever reason, mostly modifying your system, you'll be able to do that with this method. Now, this is going to be covering all of these systems here because there is two ways of doing it. First of all, if you have a PlayStation TV or a Vita TV, you're going to need, of course, your PlayStation TV and Vita TV system. You're also going to need a USB drive, and you're going to need a controller with a USB cable that you can plug into your system. If you have a PlayStation Vita system, meaning the 1000 or the 2000 handheld, you are going to need a USB cable to hook it up to your computer, and you're going to need a Windows computer. For all of this as well too, regardless, you are going to need a internet connection and a computer on hand to actually download the system update. Now, I will first be covering the PlayStation Vita itself, meaning the handheld, because I'm going to assume that most people watching this will be using that console. However, the second part of this video is going to be covering the PlayStation TV, or the Vita TV. If you're not sure of where to go, there's going to be timestamps that are linked down below in the description of this video so you'll know exactly where you need to go. Now we are going to do the regular PlayStation Vita handheld first, but let's go ahead and get our firmware file set up. First of all, we do need to download our firmware file. So the PlayStation Vita that I am using has firmware 3.60, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to download any higher firmware. So for this, I'm going to recommend Darth Sterney's firmware archive, which is linked down below in the description. You can just go over to the normal firmwares for PlayStation Vita and look for the firmware you need. Since this is going to be upgrading, it should go without saying you need to download a higher firmware version. Now, I've already downloaded firmware 3.65 and you'll want to also get this MD5 hash because that will be important. You can really just copy that out. Another site I'd recommend using is Online MD5 just so we can actually verify the integrity of our firmware. So when you are here, click on Choose File. Navigate to where you have downloaded your firmware file. Mine is right here. Make sure MD5 is selected. And then once it finishes doing the comparison, you can right click and paste and compare with. Click on Compare. And if everything matches up properly between these random numbers and letters and you get the green check mark, then congratulations, your firmware has been downloaded and verified successfully. It is the firmware you were looking for. It is not corrupted. All right, so first of all, if you have a PlayStation Vita, whichever model, the 1000 or the 2000, really, if you just have the handheld PlayStation Vita, we're going to be using QCMA for this. I know that Final HE is out there and there's a few other options as well too, such as using a DNS for updating, uh, but for this here, I'm going to be showing you all with QCMA. This is what has worked for me and it doesn't really require, you know, active Wi-Fi on the Vita itself. So for this, the link for QCMA will be down below in the video description. Now you can come to the GitHub page, go to releases and download the QCMA setup exe file. Also, I have not used this on Mac, but for anybody watching with a Mac, you'll be able to use a DMG if you wish to follow along and kind of adapt this tutorial to what you're doing here. Now, once you have the exe here, you'll just have to step through the process of installing this. Now, this step is a little bit tricky here. I myself and many others have just had issues with playing driver roulette here, depending on which one might work best. 
what you can try is using win usb and then trying installs and seeing if the other ones work but regardless to hopefully save you all some time we can continue on with the win usb driver and what i'm going to do is also show you how to change out that driver using zadig now another application you'll want to grab if you're having some driver issues but even just to save you some time and hopefully some effort will be zadig so you can download this go to the link in the description and download the latest version. You can right click, open up Zadig, say yes to this. And from here, you'll want to go to options, list all devices. And for your devices, you want to select PS Vita type B. Now, depending on whichever driver that you have installed, it might show up as WinUSB, for example, you're going to want to change it to LibUSBK, whichever that one is. As you can see, mine has already been fixed. Mine is already set up as libusbk. So once that is all installed, you can click on install WCID driver. Mine is showing reinstall because it's already been set up. But once you have that all set up there and your PlayStation Vita is now set as libusbk, you can close out of Zadig. And from there, if you hook up your PlayStation Vita, you should find under device manager libusbk USB devices and PS Vita Type B. Hopefully this helps out. Driver issues are one of the biggest issues when trying to do this, and this will just make your life a whole lot easier. If you're still possibly running into this issue, like you might see it or you might not see it, restart your PC as well, and you might be able to get further from there. So awesome. Now with all of that preliminary stuff done, let's go ahead and open up QCMA. And when you open it up, nothing's really going to happen. But if you look in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you're going to notice that QCMA is here. You might have to look at the other hidden icons that are in your tray just to find it. But what you can do is right click QCMA and click on settings. Now this is going to be the important folder. You're going to need to navigate to your PSV updates. And this folder will not be created by default, so you're going to have to create this yourself. Really, it's as simple as going into that directory path and then creating a PSV space updates folder. And once you create that folder, this is where you want to copy over your updates. So you need to know which exact version you're updating to. For this example, I'm going to use 3.65. So for this, you can copy out your update, paste it into the PSV updates folder, and this file name here must be named psp2updat.pup, exactly like this, all uppercase, one word. If you need to do this, click on view if you're using Windows and enable file name extensions. That way you'll see exactly what this is called. Now, once that's all set up, you can go to your QCMA settings, click on other, and you want to mirror your settings to look like this. So offline mode, you want to enable that. Ignore local file, PSP2 update list on update folder, you want to enable that. All the other stuff you want to keep disabled. Now for the CMA protocol selection, keep that as latest. For use this version for updates, you want to click on custom. And for the custom PS Vita version, you have to select the exact version that you are trying to update to. So since I know mine is 3.65, it's going to look a little different, but needs to look like this. So mine, for example, is 03.650.000. It needs to look exactly like that. Once you have that all set up, press OK. Now on QCMA, right click it and click on Refresh Database. And now once that's all refreshed, we can go over to our Vita. Make sure QCMA is running on your PC. There's not going to be much happening here, but just keep the service running. All right, so once you're at your PlayStation Vita, make sure it's plugged into your computer via USB. And once it is, you can go down to your settings, open up settings, go to system update and go to update by connecting to a PC. And if all is successful, it should show that there is a new update available and it should also show your exact software update version that you're trying to update to. If this is what you wanna do, just go through the standard updating process. From here, there's not much left to do. Just put down your Vita, don't touch it and wait. It's going to pull down the update file from your computer to your Vita, and then it's going to apply the update to your Vita console.
And here we go. Once your system restarts yet again, you should be on that higher firmware that you are attempting to update to. So it was about as hopefully easy as that. I know the PlayStation Vita handheld is a bit harder to do because the drivers, QCMA, and a whole lot of other nonsense that you might run into, but hopefully you are now at a point where your system software has been updated. Next up is going to be the PlayStation TV or Vita TV if you're interested in that or need to update one of your systems there and I can promise you it is less cumbersome to do than this here. Alright, so if you are going to be updating your PlayStation TV or your Vita TV, this is going to be a little bit different. Like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, you are going to need a controller, you're going to need a cable to hook up your controller to your system, as well as a USB drive. So for this process here, we're going to take our USB drive and we're going to set this up properly for our system. First of all, the USB drive must be FAT32. To check this, if you're using Windows, you can plug in your USB drive, right click it, go to properties and check the file system. If it is not FAT32, back up your data from it that you care about and we need to wipe this and format it accordingly. So we can exit out of this, right click, go to format, Select FAT32 for your file system, default allocation size is fine, quick format is fine, and it should format just fine. Now if you have a USB drive which is too big and does not show FAT32, then you might have to use another method to format it. I'm going to choose to use an external program to do this. The one that I generally use and recommend is GUI format or FAT32 format. The link for this will be down below in the description. You can click on the image here and download the file to your PC. Once this is downloaded, you want to close out of any File Explorer windows like this. So close out of all of them, but make sure you had your USB drive letter noted. And once you have all that, right click and run GUI format as administrator. Now you want to select your drive. Make sure it is the correct one. We don't want to format the wrong drive here. Make sure you've selected the correct one the default allocation size is fine, quick format is OK, start, OK, and there we go, it's been formatted. So let's close out of here. We can now go back to our USB drive and we can set this up. So in the root of your USB drive, you have to right click, new, create a new folder. And this is all one word, all uppercase, PS Vita. And inside of the PS Vita folder, you must create another new folder all uppercase, one word, update. Inside of your update folder, from here, you're going to copy in your update. So grab whatever update you care about, copy it out, and paste it inside of the update folder on your USB drive. The last thing we'll need to do is rename this accordingly. So if you're using Windows, click on View, and make sure file name extensions is enabled. And you want to rename this to all uppercase one word psvupdat.pup. It should look exactly like this, psvupdat.pup. And once it has been renamed, we can double check it, PSV to folder, update folder, psvupdat.pup. That's all good to go. So now that our USB drive has been set up, you can right click, eject your USB drive, and we're now going to use it on the PlayStation TV. All right, so for your PlayStation TV, we must first get it into safe mode or recovery mode. To do this, when the PlayStation TV is completely powered down, hold down the power button for at least seven seconds, really until the power light comes on on the front of the system. Once it comes on, you can let go of the button and you should come to a screen like this telling you to connect the wireless controller using the USB cable. So this is where you'll need to hook up your controller via USB to the system. Once it's all plugged in, of course, press the PlayStation button. From here, go down to Update System Software, press X, and then Update from USB Storage Device. Now it's going to say connect a USB storage device that contains an update for at least your system version. At this point, you can now disconnect your controller and then connect your USB drive. Once it is connected, it should automatically pick up your update file and it will then copy the update file. Once this has been copied over, you'll now need to disconnect the USB drive and then connect your controller yet again. Press the PlayStation button once this is all connected 
and now just go ahead and go through the steps of getting your system software updated. From here, you should come to the typical system update screen. Just let it do its thing, wait for it to finish up. It will restart your console once it's all done. And there we go, once our system ends up restarting, congratulations, you have been able to manually update your system. Just really get this updated without having to go to the absolute latest and greatest firmware. So hopefully this video has helped you out, whether you have a PlayStation TV, a Vita TV, or even a regular PlayStation Vita. If this video did help out, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. Anyways, as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.